Welcome back to this module on structures. In this part, we'll cover how to use structures. Once you've declared a structure, you can use it like you would any normal variable. For example, we can declare an instance of our student structure using the following syntax. Just like a regular variable, you specify its type and give the variable a name. With this syntax, to access a member variable, you use what's called the dot operator. Technically, this is called the direct component selector operator. But essentially, it's just a period. So here's an example. You specify the variable name, followed by a period, and then the name of the member variable that you want to access. Let's take a look at a full demonstration. So recall our definition of a student and its date of birth. I've included the header file in this program. Now let's go ahead and create a student. And let's set its NUID. S.NUID is equal to some fake NUID. Now the first name is a char star, a char pointer. As it is right now, that pointer is uninitialized. So what we need to do is we need to call malloc to create a memory space large enough to hold the first name. Then we can use strcpy. to copy in an actual string. We'll do the same thing for the last name. However, the GPA is a regular old variable, not a pointer. So we don't need to call malloc to set up memory to hold that double and we can assign it a value in a straightforward manner. Now, what about the date of birth? Recall that the student structure has a variable called date of birth. So to access that, we would use the dot operator. But now that's a structure containing three different values. So we use the dot operator again to access each one of those. And now we've created our first structure. Every one of the member variables has been initialized. As we just saw, creating instances of structures is going to probably be a common task. As with all common tasks, it's best to create a reusable function that handles it for you. Sometimes these are referred to as factory functions. In object-oriented programming languages, they're referred to as constructors. We'll show an example where we dynamically allocate a new structure using malloc and a return pointer to it. As we'll see when using pointers to structures, we can use the convenient arrow operator to access member variables instead of the dot operator. Let's take a look. In the header file, I'll define the function. Now here's a design decision. The function as we've written requires the user to actually construct an instance of a date structure and then pass it to this function so that it can be copied over to the new student. Alternatively, we could have had them provide three integer variables. And then the user doesn't need to create a new date structure. Instead, they just pass those three values. We'll go ahead and demonstrate this solution. Remember that source files usually have the same name followed by .c instead. Now I'm returning a pointer to a newly created student. So I'm going to have to call malloc. Now malloc needs to know how many bytes it takes to create a student. Fortunately, we can still use the size of macro to determine how many bytes each student takes. As long as you've properly declared the structure the compiler is smart enough to be able to go to it and count up the number of bytes that each member variable takes. 
Now, strictly speaking, this multiplication by one is not necessary, but I wanna drive home the point that I'm only creating one. In the next part, we'll discuss how to create an array of structures, in which case you'd want more than one. Now, before we return this pointer, we need to initialize all the values. One way of doing this is to take s and turn it into a regular variable by dereferencing it. Now that it's a regular variable, we can use the dot operator to set it to the given NUID. However, this will not work because the dot operator actually has a higher order of precedence than the dereference operator. So we have to surround the dereference with parentheses and then use the dot operator. That can get pretty messy if you're doing that a lot. That's exactly what the arrow operator does. It's a little bit cleaner syntax. Whenever you have a pointer to a structure, you use the arrow operator instead. Now to make a deep copy of the first name, we'll need to use strlen plus one for the null terminating character. and copy it over. Last name likewise. Now S is a pointer to a student structure but date of birth is not a pointer to a date structure. It's still a regular old structure. So we would still use the dot operator here. Having this is pretty convenient because now we don't have to use 10 lines of code every time we wanna create an instance of a student. we only need to provide the correct number of arguments to our function. Now as a review to compile, you use the C flag and that produces a student.o object file. The program doesn't do anything because we're only constructing an instance and then quitting. In the next part, we'll talk about how to work with these even more.